Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, hurricane forecasts, some interesting news articles, some somber weather events, and a call to get acquainted with the moon. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were not terribly active. No coronal holes facing Earth. We do have some bright active regions that tried briefly to ramp up the solar flaring yesterday, but with little success. We do have a large sunspot group facing Earth now. It's the closest to magnetic danger, but even it is having trouble avoiding spread and separation of the polarity. Heavy mixing is where flares come from. Also, please note that by tomorrow, we should have umbral visibility of that incoming group back there that's cresting over the limb. Let's go now to the solar wind. Purple, the plasma speed, shows we hit our peak intensity over the last day, and indeed, even as density in orange falls back this morning, the geomagnetic unrest endures and should continue much of the day today. Culprit of this stream is the departing dark coronal hole on the north, just about 36 hours from the southern system coming in next, bottom left there. Coming to our articles where they have determined that much of the superthermal ionized iron in the magnetosphere comes from our own ionosphere, magnetically yanked and energized. They also discuss a solar wind source, so I'll take a moment to briefly remind you that it was back in the 1990s that SOHO discovered every known element in the solar wind. A couple quick mega maser shots. Those are energetic phenomena that emit microwave lasers, and here they say there's a ton of water nearby aiding their analysis. Also nice to see the tiny barred spiral in the center of the larger feature presenting the same form. The National Hurricane Center is tracking major storm Irma across the Atlantic. Many models are now updating, but you need to go further to see their actual landfall forecasts. We'll run through the European model and then NASA's, the GFS. Both models are going to show landfall to the United States. European model has it striking Georgia and in the Carolinas on September 11th. However, the GFS model shows arrival one day earlier, and it has it up the coastline between Washington, D.C. and Philadelphia. Reminder, we'll be updating these forecasts every day until that landfall. Of course, we've also made it a point to discuss the tragedies of meteorological genesis across the world as well. Buildings down, crops destroyed, millions displaced, and thousands of lives lost from Pakistan to India to Nepal. The monsoon shifts, I remind you again, have begun for the solar minimum period. Lastly, folks, if you didn't catch our interview with David Dilly, The Moon and Global Weather Cycles, it is a vitally important complementary piece to our look at solar-driven climate change, which I'm now seeing as more magnitude-related, while our direction of trend and temperature truly seems based on the moon. It is Saturday, so in a few hours we'll be posting the weekly podcast Fly on the Wall for members at suspiciousobservers.org. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.